How is it that a Christian talks? How is it that a Christian presents himself? How do you differentiate between a Christian and a person that is in the world? It is not by the anointing. It is not because they lay hands on people and they get healed or because they prophesy great words for our words that they hear from the Lord. That might be so, but we don't identify them in that context. How to have the character of Jesus Christ more than anything else. How to have the character of Jesus Christ. How to be like Him. How to sound like Him. How to respond to challenging situations the way that Jesus did. Not to necessarily get angry or vengeful. That's what this process of dying to self will bring you to a, a place where you know you easily you can forgive and forget by the grace of God. And in doing so, we want to move to Galatians 5, and we'll read from 13, 13 to 24. Galatians 5, 13 to 24. Galatians 5, 13 says, For brethren, ye have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. By love serve one another. Don't use this empowerment that we get from the Spirit in a fleshy manner, but to serve. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right, we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit, understanding where they come from. They come from the Holy Spirit. So as you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you subject your life to Him, you give your life to Him, and now you begin to, you begin to transform through the power of the Holy Spirit. We, we have to know begin to depend on the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to cultivate in us these things. For it says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But it says, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, be empowered, be emboldened, and then walk in the spirit so everything that we are undertaking here that we have been undertaking for the last four months it is in regards to this to growing up spiritually we're not about empowering your flesh or our own fleshes no we're talking about spiritual growth and maturity so we can walk in this dimension so for the flesh lost it against the spirit you see where the battle is your flesh don't want to die that is where the battle is and the spirit, <coughs> excuse me, says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So you cannot live a powerful spiritual life unless you begin to grow up spiritually. Not verses 18, but if ye be led up the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Look at this now. Which are these? So if you're if you find that you're being defeated constantly by not any one of these, then you see it's the issue is in the flesh. Flesh needs to be crucified. But now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, the people of the world. We will see this in them. Adultery fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveling. We see these things on TV. We see people literally crazy burning buildings all just out of control. It's a, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if we find ourselves in this place where these are the manifestations that we're seeing, then we're, that those are the things that are consistent with your soul. And now you got to put that body under. You got to begin to, you got to begin to even cut off the sources that are feeding that nature and begin to go after the things of God. Go after the things of God. Now look at where the power is. The power is in your spirit. The power is in the Holy Spirit empowering your spirit. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, 
joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And look what it says in verses 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. So when your flesh has been crucified, guess what? The, how much control Satan will have over you? How much influence? When Satan comes to tempt, what is he appealing to? He's appealing to the carnal aspects of our being, the, the aspects of us that has not truly died and been subjected to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So we want to talk this morning about how to cultivate these fruits in our lives, how to cultivate the character of Christ in our, in our own character and begin to operate like he did. Even challenging situations, you will find yourself in control. It won't be a panic. So and the gifts of the Spirit, right? The first fruit that the Holy Spirit cultivates in you is love love when you begin to when you begin to spend time in prayer when you begin to desire the things and hunger for the things of god so much that you will now have the time you will make the time to pray and to fellowship with the holy spirit you will begin to cultivate love inside of you when you come to jesus christ under that adamic nature so many different things that we have been taught and we learn we have to know unlearn these things by the power of God. It's not something that we can undertake in our own strength. God gives you the ability to do this. And as you begin to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and hunger and thirst and the desire and asking and seeking, and then begin to cut off the sources that were feeding your carnal man, the old man, and begin to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you will begin to see that you will begin to have love for others. Love. You will not be so only you will not be only concerned about your own affairs. The things of God will begin to concern you. The lost, those who do not know Jesus Christ. You will actually spend your time. I noted that in myself, that after I begin to seek Jesus, and I said, look, I begin to take a lot of time. And I, I prayed in my closet. I took uh, two years from work. And I wasn't, and I was home reading the scriptures and praying. And I didn't watch TV in that time frame. I had very little um, convert conversations during those days. I was just in my closet, so I, literally in my closet, my clothes closet, by the way, right? Kneeling down, laying down, crying out to God. And fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. And God began to change my desires. I began to be focused on different things. I began to have a, a love and a hunger for the hurting and the broken and the lost. I would leave sometime and go on the street and sit, and I have an agenda to talk to five people, 10 people about Jesus. I do that and I come back home. I wasn't even going after chasing money. I could have been making money in that time. God had given me this invitation like he's given all of us. And I said, yes, I want this. I want to be like Jesus Christ.